When I first met James, uh, and this was just a little over a year ago, a month into his job, he was, he was explaining how Nielsen has to change so quickly. And his strategy that he explained to me at the time was to take advantage of cloud computing. But he was so absolute. I mean, I walked out and said to our account, our account team, this is the most serious guy I've met about cloud computing. And here we are a year later, and can you explain to us what you've done in cloud and why it's important to Nielsen? Well, I, I was using cloud not just to change the way we buy and sell hard, buy, buy hardware, right? I mean, I think that's interesting, but that's not why we were pushing it from Nielsen's perspective. I think that we wanted to leverage Agile. We wanted to change the way we built systems. We wanted to change the way we operated and deployed those systems. So that was a huge change for Nielsen, who had traditionally been a very waterfall orientated, um, build your own data center point of view, right? Um, so that was the first big change. The second thing, um, in addition to Agile and DevOps, was we wanted to have elasticity. We wanted to be able to scale. You know, the world is moving to more real time. The world is moving to less batch. And I think it was important that we had the systems in place to do that. And that's going to enable new business models as well. And I thought that was really interesting. Um, and I think uh, we also wanted to standardize. We wanted to start to move up the stack, get away from proprietary technologies, move to open source. Um, and so cloud was a, um, a mechanism of driving all of these things across the organization and uh, embracing those things, not so much you know, running proof of concepts and saying, can we do this, but actually saying, we're going to do this. This is possible. We know we have, there are plenty of businesses who are running off these environments. Let's work out how we can do it. Let's not say, could we do it? Um, so it's been a big you know, year in journey. We've got this year, we'll have around 10% of our workloads, commercial workloads, in the cloud. The other thing that was really important was that our customers are asking us to start to deliver in the cloud. And so we needed to align our architectures. We needed to understand their architectures. We needed to be able to uh, solve their problems. And so it was a great opportunity to do that, too. And one of the first areas you focused on was in, in big data and analytics and doing some of your, your uh, analytic workloads in the cloud. Yep. Um, and, and I remember these conversations. You, you had to go through and say, OK, what are we doing on-prem? What do we want to do in the cloud? And you also went to a multi-cloud. Mm -hmm. Can you walk us through what you've done in the past year and why you made those decisions? Well, you know, I, I think it was never going to be an absolute. We were never going to move 100% to the cloud simply because we have a lot of legacy. You know, we're a, a country, country's been, company that's been around for a long time, so we've got systems which are hard to migrate. and. Um, we didn't want to start there. So we're going to end up in a very hybrid environment for a long time to come. Um, we're going to build we're, the new systems we're building, we're building for the cloud. And then we're migrating the big leverage items uh, into the cloud as well. But we'll always uh, have a data center for the foreseeable future. I would hope to get to some, you know, say, 50% of our workloads in the public cloud in the future. Um, the other thing is that we've decided to be multi-cloud. Um, that was largely driven by our customers. We had customers who said, we would like to align in with Microsoft. We would like to align with AWS. And so we decided to pay the extra cost around comms and complexity to make sure that we could do that. It's also good discipline for us, I think, that we adopted both clouds because we were able to say, OK, we're going to use a software stack which we could deploy across either of those vendors so that we have flexibility going forward so we can take a you know, arbitrage across CPU and storage costs as, th as those go forward as well. So it's a good discipline, and um, we're at that position now where we have uh, some products being deployed in Azure and some products being deployed in AWS. Well, I think you even go beyond that, because I know your work with Cloudera with us, uh, you're using Director to manage uh, Amazon and Azure. Yep. But all of your business applications, you've gone to Google. Is that correct? That's correct. We, uh, uh, that's, that was a, um, another big initiative inside the organization. That was around... Uh, us as a company becoming more digital. I think that at some point you need to change culture, and changing culture is very hard. And so one way to do that is to make sure that we have the right tools in place and to demand you know, different kinds of collaboration styles and stuff like that. So we uh, went Google, yeah. Yeah, one of the things that we're at Cloudera seeing with a lot of our customers, and about 20% of our customer workloads are now operating in the cloud, uh, is they want the ability to what we call hunt the lowest total cost of ownership. Uh, these, the cloud providers are doing a tremendous job of continually lowering costs, but you want to be able to have the leverage to find that lowest cost right. and find those spot instances. And we're seeing that in Nielsen also, having that ability to look across the different cloud exactly. players.